Welcome back to Conquest Creations, and in this game we have my dwarves going up against Geordie's Easterlings. We've got two super fun lists, so let's see how this game goes. G'day team, Geordie here from the Two Towers podcast, a middle of strategy battle game podcast. Back at it again with Jacob with just a, cute, a chill, casual game. It's been freaking a couple of years, so let's do it. We've brought uh, one of my favorite lists, fun list, bunch of ninjas, a bunch of big heroes, well, two big heroes and two little baby heroes. So I brought the Dragon Emperor of Run. I've got Rutabi, his most trusted general. I brought two Easterling captains this time. One on horse with a bow, absolutely trash loadout, but she's very fun. And then I brought my favorite new model, uh, an Easterling captain ninja, like a ninja captain, dope. And then I've got, I think 19 ninjas and a cataract with a drum, because you don't leave home without it. It's been a little while since I've got to get any games in, so I'm keen just to have a chill, friendly one and throw down my favorite army, which is my army of Thrall. Speaking of my army, I've got the main man himself, Thrall. He's leading 15 Guardians of the King, which are Grim Hammers that have a one point upgrade that gives them strength four. And then I've got Thrall, Thorin, Dwalin, and Balin. These are all the young versions of those profiles coming from the army of Thrall list, not Thorin's company list. I'm going up against the Easterlings today and I am excited. I've seen everywhere online the Dragon Emperor is terrifying. He even featured highly in my video that was the top 5 best and worst heroes. But I have a confession, I haven't actually got a chance to play against him yet. At every tournament I've been to for the past little while I've missed him and I just haven't got casual games against him. So I'm going to learn today, is he actually that good? Because I don't know, I reckon I'll be able to take him down. Easterlings vs Army Thrall, sick matchup. Um, pretty thematic. I'm sure the Dragon Emperor had a few tries at uh, Erebor before Old Smaug came. So, you know, we'll see if he can fight me off and... Or if not, I'll take the, the treasure hoard for myself. And today's scenario is capture and control. To play this scenario, we have five objectives on the table. One here, on the cliff, on the back rampart, in the rocks, and finally, in the Dwarven household. Each of these objectives at the end of the game is worth two points. There's also one point for breaking the enemy, killing their leader, and the game ends on the roll of a one or two after one army's broken. The Dwarven household on this table is a part of the next Conquest Creations Kickstarter, the Kingdom of Dwarves. You're going to be getting a lot more information about that over the next couple videos, so stay tuned. I want the roll off to see who deploys first, so I'm just chucking Bal in. Pretty central there, where he's pretty safe. Geordie went down with his Eastland captain with Bow next, who was in a warband just by herself. And then I chucked down Dwalin by himself. Geordie responded with his captain by himself. And then I went with Thorin by himself. This is a super weird deployment. Rutabi finally went down with a few troops. Usually, people have all their warbands spread out evenly, but for Geordie and I's army, we've put all our eggs in one big warband. And that's where the Dragon Emperor's gone down, on the left side of the battlefield. The Dragon Acolyte Warriors are a super cool profile for the Easterlings. They get two attacks and a throwing weapon, so they can put out a lot of damage really quickly. They also get plus two to all their climb tests, so they can jump around the terrain really easily. Now that Geordie's deployed his big warband, I can deploy mine knowing where he is, so I'll be able to have the maneuvering advantage here. I've got 15 of these Grim Hammers. They're awesome line troops. They've got Defense 7, Strength 4 with a throwing weapon, and they can either choose to use their weapon two-handed or single-handed, as well as choosing to bash or piercing strike with it. I love these guys because they give you so many options. And here is the table after deployment. And Jordy, do you have any thoughts before this game begins? Oh, no, this would be a walkover. Easy. Oh, 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 all right. All right, the challenge's been set. Well, let's get straight into it. So turn one priority went to Jordy. Jordy, what are you going to do here? Cheeky little drum. No need to march yet. So that drum adds three inches to your movement, but you can't charge me. Geordie started his move in a clever way of just getting models onto the objective so that he could tag them and hold them for the future game. He put plenty of ninjas around this one. And then he did something unexpected. He took all of his army and he ran them to the other side of that building. This is where I was expecting him to deploy because it was the better side for him to fight on, but instead he's caught me out on the wrong foot by making his whole army move faster than mine. I had to respond by getting guys onto the objectives as quickly as possible so I could hold them and hopefully get a points advantage. And then I sent all my heroes over to that side, because if it's my heroes versus his troops, I am going to win this game. And then I sent my Grimhammers forward to contest this objective. And this is our board after movement. I was expecting Georgie to deploy there. He didn't, so I deployed over there, and now he's moved over there, so I'm gonna chase him there as well. 
In the shooting phase, both Geordie and I threw weapons at each other, but no one died. I'm just going to quickly interrupt to tell you about a really exciting new thing for Conquest Creations. We've just partnered with 4th Age 3D Printing. 4th Age makes some incredible army bundles so that you can start the Middle Earth hobby in just one click with some amazing alternative models. My personal favourite army is the Silver Goat Dwarves. These guys are going to make for some perfect iron hills. You can use the code CONQUEST2023 to get 15% off your order. For an army bundle, that's $40. And every purchase you make through the link in the description below gives a kickback to the channel. I've been working closely with Chris to make sure these army bundles are perfect for new players starting out in the hobby or veterans looking to start their next project. And next turn priority went to the dwarves. I was tempted to re-roll it with Balan to try to lose priority, but didn't in the end. And Jordy, what have you declared? Drumming, baby. Drumming. Alright, so you won't be able to charge me even if I run forwards. So that'll go into my move. And in my move, I started by charging the Easterling Warrior in the building so that I could protect that objective and hopefully take it. And then on the next objective, I charged in with as many Grim Hammers as possible. Five Grim Hammers is a pretty formidable force, so I think they'll be able to do it. And then I pushed forwards with all of my heroes, hoping to run into Geordie's troops. That took us to his move. What are you thinking with this Captain Geordie? She's going to be a, a nuisance for the back line. And then if combat meets, I'll be able to get in on some good action. Or she can come up here and mess with your back objective. So he uses his ninja special rule to get plus two to his movement, meaning he's gotten equivalent to a six and he's able to charge that Grim Hammer. And Geordie completely caught me off guard here. He decided to take his whole army around to the other side of the building, meaning those five Grim Hammers have a swarm of Easterlings about to descend on them. He's outplayed me here and absolutely outmaneuvered me. I'm in a bit of strife here. And that went to the shooting phase where my Grimhammer's throwing weapons managed to kill one Dragon Acolyte, but his swarm of throwing weapons back managed to take down one of my Grimhammer's. Not a good result for me. And in the fight phase, I had a Grimhammer just be pushed back by a Dragon Acolyte, and the next one was slain. My high defense wasn't enough to keep me safe. In the building, I lost the fight and was pushed back. And next turn priority's gone to the Dwarves. Geordie decided not to call anything. So I know that I need to get this objective, so I'm fighting the guy inside the building once again. And I want to tie up the Dragon Emperor, because if he can move, then he can probably go after one of my heroes and do some damage, so I charged him with the Grim Hammer. Up the top, this last Grim Hammer is fighting as hard as he can, and in the middle, everyone needs to get back across to that side. If my heroes can get into combat, I can do a lot of damage really, really quickly, so I'm pushing them that direction as fast as I can. And Geordie's move responded with Rutabi charging in, as well as more Dragon Acolytes charging into that front line, but avoiding combat with Thraw, so they don't need to fight him this turn. And then it was just stacks on the other warriors, and importantly, an Easterling captain went in to help out the Dragon Emperor. Finally, his captain charged my Grimhammer, going for the objective. This is the board after movement. Geordie, what are you thinking here? Yeah, so like I mentioned, I'm trying to dodge Jacob's heroes with my speed, and I think we've got a pretty good shot here. A bunch of Grim Hammers are outnumbered and uh, fighting heroes. I've also put pressure back on this side so he can commit Thrain or Young Dwalin, but I'm happy if 80 points goes this way. But I think if I can get through this turn without too many casualties and get movement first next turn, I'm gonna get a lot of heroes into combat and start putting out the damage. So that's gonna take us to the combat phase. I'm not gonna do any shooting, do you have any? Shooting? Nah. All right, perfect. Well, let's get into the fights. Do you have any heroics to declare? I think I do. Yep. Um, it's pretty ballsy, but I've got enough dice, I reckon. I'm going to call a heroic with Rutabi. Yep. And a heroic with the Eastland Captain here, who's Helping out the Dragon him. Emperor. So starting with the Rutabi fight, I've set the bar on a three, but I've got a banner reroll here. You've got the six, <laughs> you've got the five value, so you will win that. You need a six to kill me. And wow. Never mind. Calm down, there we go. <laughs> There's four wounds, all right, and then it's your movement with Rutabi and those two Acolytes. The Acolytes went down to a lonely Dwarf warrior who had tapped the objective, and Rutabi just pushed into the Dwarf next to her. So Rutabi and the Acolytes have moved, which means it's the next heroic combat. We've got the Dragon Emperor, and I'll set the bar for you. That's Ooh, a six! It's a, a six. One. So, Emperor here. Oh, well, it's four. not a six. Not great. So you've got... Uh, Captain. Captain and an Acolyte. It's not Still a six, a come on, and come the, on. The ninja, he'll pull through, don't even worry about it. No, you got a not battery bad, roll. I've actually got a few rerolls. We okay. have the Legion bonus, Lords of the East. All heroes get a free reroll on top of banners. Okay. So, we'll take this three and this one, and we'll take our banner. Actually, in theory, I should banner the Emperor. Alright, wow. Rerolls for days. 
Oh! oh. <laughs> Captain Bullsbury. Well, all right, you've won that. Uh, it was Emperor, a fool's hope, but I had hope. Emperor with 18 attacks, don't worry about it. Yeah. I think you should be able to do it here. Um, uh, it needs a six. There we go. Yeah. All right, Jordy, what are you doing with the Emperor here? I'm getting all six of the Palanquin bearers to jump over a wall. All right. It's this... only thematic that I roll a one, but obviously I'd like to roll better. This is going to be <laughs> an impressive feat. Six? Oh, we'll I was hoping for a one. What a knock from take it. But there he goes. The Dragon Emperor is a beastly character. Not only is he a 12 inch banner, but he also gives plus one fight to all Easterling warriors within six inches of him. Combine that with having a reroll for Lord of the East and a banner reroll, he is difficult to lose a fight with. And if he wins a fight, his Palakrin bearers also get to strike an additional six attacks. In the next fight down below, my dwarf was trapped and slain. Up on the mountaintop, my dwarf was killed again, and then finally by the horde of dragon acolytes, another dwarf died. In here, we were pushed back by two acolytes and slain. Rutabi finished off by just pushing back a dwarf, not finishing me off. And then the captain pushed me back and killed a dwarf. Terrible. And this is what the board's looking like. Now, at this point, I've lost 10 of my 20 models, so it might seem like things are very bad for me. And while they are, I haven't spent a single might point or fate point yet. So I've got a lot of resources on my heroes, and I'm about to blow it to hopefully put a lot of damage out onto Geordie here. Priority went to the dwarves here, and Geordie decided to call a heroic move with his captain. I countered that with Balan's one point of might, and then he did a master battle with Rutabi, but failed. Let's see the roll. I really hope this goes dwarves. We want a four, five, six. Uh, yeah, it's your priority. And that is a five, so that goes to my move. And Balan's going first, and he is going to come around and charge Rutabi. Now, Rutabi will be defending that barrier, but I'll charge her on the other side, so she'll lose that bonus. Now, I know I need to do a lot of damage this turn, and I do damage with my heroes. So Dwalin charged through, and he's going against the Easterling Captain that called a heroic combat last turn. And then Thrain is running into Rutabi. I want to kill these heroes. These two Grimhammers at the back are just screening me off so that Geordi's cavalry can't come in and tie my heroes off. And Thorin charged in, in the building, I'm making sure that I'm fighting there because that's the objective that I currently hold. And then the cavalry came in, they both went on one Grimhammer, so I'm expecting a heroic combat there. And then Geordi left that objective for this turn, but that's okay, he'll have plenty of opportunity in the future. And more Eastlings just ran forwards. And this is our board after movement. Those Dwarven heroes are ready to fight, they're all full stat, so they're going to put out a lot of damage, hopefully. And there's a couple of fights going on in the building where I control that objective. That's going into the fight phase. Do you have any heroics to declare? I got a, I got a metric ton. No, I've, I've definitely got one here. I'm going to call a heroic combat with my legendary archer captain. Um, I think that's it for now. I'll save it to, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, all right. Um, now, because that acolyte is fighting against Dwalin, that's putting him at equal fight. So Dwalin is actually going to call a heroic strike there. Mmm, ticky. I think... I may as well try and master battle this because I feel yep. like the Thrain Train might have a crack as well. I'll be striking with Rutabi for free. All right, and then I'm gonna. So it's awkward because you're gonna go in and try to peel Thrain off. Um, but I will be striking with Thrain just in case that doesn't happen. Um, so that's a heroic strike from Thrain. And finally, I'm gonna do a two arms from Thorin. So all dwarves within three inches of Thorin get plus one strength. And I will also call a heroic combat with Thorin. Well, how about we roll up to see whose combat goes first? I'll do the roll there. So four, five, six goes to me. One, two, three goes to Geordi. And that goes to me. So Thorin fighting an acolyte. Whoa. I'm on a six. Oh, really? oh you win anyway. All right. And now Thorin is going to charge into this cataphract. Yeah, that's good. good now, point. the goal here is that if the Easterling Captain wins that fight and kills him, there's not a 40 mil gap there, so he won't be able to peel off Thrain. And the next fight is the heroic combat. We've got a Grimhammer fighting against the captain. I've set the bar on a two. So You're a on sixes. sixes you yeah. only fight four. I've got a banner. Not enough. All right, so you've won that fight. And you need a six to kill. It's pretty important, to be honest. So let's get a cheeky six. Nice. Captain, pull and, pull and work. This is sick. And, Jordy, where's that captain going to end up? It's interesting. I might charge all my Barland, because he's fight four, yeah? Uh, he is 5'4", that's correct. So we're going to have to do a bit of a loop around, but I feel like that's well and truly within 10 inches. And our next fight is Balan fighting against the captain. Big 
four. I'm on a five, so I'm winning currently. I have Lord of the East and a banner. Oh. And so oh no. I'll I'll spend a point of mine. Go All right. 50, 50. One, two, three goes to you. Four, five, six goes to me. Goes to me. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's okay. So first strike on the horse. Nope. Second strike on the horse. No, Ooh, didn't it. get it. So the captain has just backed up there, taking no damage. Inside the building, my Grimhammer pushed back an Acolyte, but the next Acolyte killed a Grimhammer. We're dropping like flies. And next we've got Thorin fighting against a Cataphract. I'm on a six. Ah, You're on a six, but I've got the high five. Too good. And now... Strength five. Strength five, your defense seven. Six. Six, that, well, that you're works. dead. Next up, we have Thrall fighting an Acolyte. I'm on a six, you're on a six, but I'm right, fight buddy. six, so I'll win that. Your defense four, currently I'm strength five, but yes, that's yeah. a kill. Uh, so Dwalin is fighting next, now I'm going to roll his strike. He's fight five, but he's gotten, oh, just to mm -hmm. fight six. So if he'd gotten high enough, I would have lowered his fight value by D3 to reroll wounds. So if that was a better roll, he would have done that. But let's see what he sets the bar on. It's a Ooh. four, you're on a six, so I've got a banner reroll. To a three, I don't have enough might points to take me up there, so I will just lose that and have to push back, which is really frustrating because I need to be doing damage. What's his defense? Only defense six. All right, captain on five. Yeah. So there's three. one wound. I fucking get it in the tray. Just one. Just one. He'll take it. And our last fight of the turn, the main event, it's Ooh, yeah. Thrain versus Rutabi. Let's see those strikes. strikes. If I can get it in the uh, tray. I'm only fight nine. What are you going to be? Cheeky four plus. Oh. oh, so you're the high fight. It's not over for me yet. Now, the big question is to shield or not to shield. Your defense eight, yeah? Defense eight, that's correct. So I you need like six to, to move me. Master battle's pretty big, so I'm going to shield it up. Wow. All right. I'm on a six. Just. Oh. <laughs> it's a terrible roll, but it's the roll that you needed just to push me back. That was the turn that I really needed to put some damage out. And priority this turn went to the dwarves. Jordy, what have you done? Uh, Ritabi's calling the uh, heroic move because in a perfect world, that emperor can actually get in. I've decided to counter that with Thrall and here's the roll off, a four, five, six goes to the dwarves. Ooh. Goes to the dwarves again. I've done well with the rerolls here. So I just need to get myself in a position where I can actually put out a lot of damage. And if I can put out a lot of damage, I can start to edge towards winning this game. Now, at the start of the turn, I am broken, which means at the end of this turn, we will be rolling on a one or two, the game ends. So hopefully the game keeps going because I've got a lot of ground to make up. Because I'm broken, my heroes had to take courage tests, but Thrall Auto Pass for being a hero of legend, and Thrain has a battlefield-wide stand fast that also affects other heroes. So courage-wise, Army of Thrall is all good. I made a screen with Balan and Grimhammer behind my heroes so they couldn't be trapped and peeled off, they keep fighting. In Jordy's move, he jumped up onto this objective, no surprise there, and then just tried to engage me where he could and jump the Dragon Emperor away. And this is our board at the end of the move phase. We're gonna start the fight phase with Thrall fighting against two Acolytes. Thrall, come on Acolytes. Out of the tray, I'm on <laughs> three. I've got a banner for myself yep. to a five. Okay, All right, okay. I'm winning the fight. What do we need? We need a cheeky six. You that need old. a six. Come on. No, no good. No, okay. All yours. <laughs> Rolls to wound. Just one. Oh, just one. I'll take out the one between me and the Dragon Emperor, because if that fight's going to happen, it needs to happen soon. And our next fight is Dwalin going up against the captain. Now, I've chosen this one because the captain is trapped in there. Big oh. shield action, I reckon. Here we go. I'm on a six, and I'm five, five. You're on the six as well. It was a good roll, but not good enough. So I will double my strikes. Now I'm strength five, your defense seven, so I just need fives. Ouch. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> There's one, we've got a cocked dice. That's a cock look. Oh, and it's a big cock. It's a good cock. All right. Fate point to, to stay fate. alive. Four up, no might. Come on, Captain. Be the Chad you are. No! no! <laughs> Slain. My ninja captain. And next up, we've got Thorin going up against a dragon acolyte. Easy win. Five to me. Oh, I don't do that. I've got a banner roll. And it's a two. Now, I really don't want to spend a point of might here, but I'm running out of models and I'm running out of time and I need to kill, so I will spend a point of might to win that. So Thorin's just got one left. He'll back this way. I can back away. I just need force to wound. And that'll do it just. We've got Thrain going up against Rutabi and a friend. Now, we're both fight six in there, so it's even on the five value. It's going to come down to the dice. 
I'm on a six. You're on a Babies. six. Roll. All right. Let me win my first one. Let's now, go. I've still got priority, so I get to roll this one. Let's see a four, five, six. <laughs> nice. <laughs> After a bit of thought, Thrain's going to take his first strike at the Acolyte. I kill him on a three. Ooh. Classic. Yep, always. Yes, okay. <laughs> got the kill, and then a strike on Rutabi. That's nothing, but I, at least I killed one guy. We've got a dwarf in the house, and the reason this one's on camera is because it's really important. If this dwarf can hold them up, then I can keep that objective because it's currently mine. So let's see what we get. I want a four. You're on five. Oh, five. Sorry. Oh, cheetah. Filthy cheetah. 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 On filthy camera. cheetah. Now everyone knows my shame. That's it, yeah. Still five. It's a five, alright. <laughs> now, I've got Thraw and through a window. Oh, I don't... The banner doesn't need a window. Banner doesn't need a window? That's all As I need to do. As a general deal. rule, that's true. All right. is, it's a bit awkward, but whatever. Oh, got a one. Yep. So that will go to you. <laughs> and can you kill me? You need a six on four dice. It's good odds. Nope. And there it is. Fucking doesn't matter, but I'm going to get it in there. So taken out. So that means next turn you'll have free run at that objective. It's not good. And in the last two fights of the turn, another Grimhammer was killed by the Easterling Captain and Balin lost his fight and just pushed back. And here we are at the end of the turn. Now 15 of my 20 dwarves have died and it was all of the Grimhammers, but we still have all five of our heroes and they're just in there doing a final stand. Now I've killed nine of Geordie's models, so it might look bad for me, but it's actually not that bad because my courage is great. And if I can tie him up when he's broken, he's gonna flee the battlefield a lot. So this game is far from over. Let's see what happens. Now, because I am broken, we need to roll to see if the game ends on a one or two. But the game continues. And in the last stand of the dwarves, priority went to me once again, which we've done very well with. The dragon emperor used his first point of might to call a heroic move. That means Jordi has just three might left on the table. Two on the emperor, one on Rutabi. I counted it with Thror. That puts me with five might left on the table. One on Thror, two on Thrain, one on Thorin, and one on Dwalin. And the roll off on a four, five, six will go to the dwarves. Hey! hey. That's the first one that's actually mattered that I've lost. That's not what's supposed to happen. And with his move, the Dragon Emperor decided to charge into Thorin and Thror. But it looks like Thror is probably going to get peeled off by some Acolytes later on. And Geordi charged into Balin, but on his way in, he threw a throwing weapon. That throwing weapon hit, did a wound, Balin failed two fate points to be the first Dwarven hero dead. And with the rest of his movement, Geordi is just swarming my heroes. Now the good thing is my heroes are really strong and have a decent amount of resources left. So I want to see how much damage I can put out here. And into the combat phase, I decided that I would be calling a heroic strike with Thorin to try to slow down the Dragon Emperor and maybe even put a wound on him. Geordi, what did you respond with? Uh, Rutabi straight up, Master of Battled. Uh, and the Emperor is calling a strike because... Let's take advantage of the Elven Blade. All right, and then the last action that I called was a heroic strike with Dwalin, who's going up against Rutabi. I did toss around the idea of doing a combat with Thrain, because he only needs threes to wound those Acolytes, but decided not to, decide to save his might. And the order of combats is really important here, because I'll be able to untrap some of my heroes. So we're going to start with Dwalin's fight. So we'll see what our fight values get up to. I'm oh, fight five. Oh, oh I just... Oh. Oh. <laughs> So oh, I'm it. fight six, but your fight seven. Two ones on the strike is terrible. Oh, that's um, gross. So you know what? In there, I'm trapped. I've already taken a wound, so I'm going to piercing strike, and I'm going to lower my fight value by D3, which I'm already <laughs> lower than you, so it doesn't matter, and that gives me the ability to reroll wounds. So if I magically win this, I'm going to be putting out some damage. Easy, let's All do right. it. All right, I'll set the bar for you. Oh, no. It's not good. Rutabi sitting on a five. I'll do my banner. Six, Ooh. come on, here we go. Uh, El Capitan, bring in the heat. Chill, bro. Oh, Too easy. no. Never didn't have it. Dwalin put up a good fight there, getting that six. Uh, now, his defense goes down by just one. So he is defense five. So okay. you'll need fives to wound him on all those dice in there. Rutabi's trap rule coming to play. So I'll do her. She can just chop you down. Yep. Oh. In order, in order to spite Shawnee Rosado, I'm going to go with the captain. Oh, yes. Can the captain get the kill? Come on. That's it. Two wounds. Two wounds. Uh, I've got... Uh, I'm going to try to deny you this. Yeah. I've got two fate, one wound. If I pass these both... No. Nope. All right. Captain did it. So, Shawnee, keep that in mind. All right. And the next fight is the next strike off. It's Thorin versus the Dragon Emperor. Oh! Oy. Okay, your fight's eight. Eight. I'm fight ten. Easy. All right. Here we go. Come on, Thorin. 
That's a oh, six. Oh, the Emperor beaten in battle. I've decided to put all my strikes on the Emperor because I want to get points for wounding him. I need sixes though. Nothing. Oof. We'll fight with Thraw next. Now nice. Thraw's got three attacks. There's the six. Oh, I'll fight six. I'll I'm better well. than you. Yep. Yep. And all right. I need fours to kill. If I can get a few kills here, there's a chance I can break you this turn. Ooh. There's two kills. So That's take down two acolytes. And in the last fight of the turn, it's Thrain, who still has two might points going up against these Acolytes. Now Thrain can, if he, th Thrain only needs threes to wound, and if he kills two of them, Geordie will be broken. Oh shit. It's not good. <laughs> it's, oh, it's a five. Five's five. alright. But no. I've got the six. Never mind. Two three ups. There's two, so you are broken. Whoa. And take two of them down. Mm. And at the end of that turn, we roll to see if the game is over. On a one or two, it's all over, but it continues. Mm. Priority once again went to the dwarves. We're absolutely champions at winning priority. Ritabi's gonna call the heroic. It puts her at zero, but in theory, she can still uh, master battle strikes and such. So you've just got one point of might left on the table with the dragon emperor. This is a really big roll off, because if I win it, I can tie up all your stand fast and some of your acolytes might be running away. This is the one roll off all game that I want more than the rest of them. Let's go! Oh no! And Thrain moves first and he passed his courage test, so my other heroes pass as well. He tied up two of the stand fast, Thrall went for the emperor, and Thorin went for more troops. And Geordi had seven courage tests to make around the board, and he managed to pass every single one of them. So he's still got a lot of acolytes on the table. Now, Geordi, why has this acolyte stayed in the back here? It seems like he should just run forward and fight, right? <laughs> well, I mean, one acolyte can only do so much. What I'd rather do is actually mitigate against genuine tabling. So even though I've got all five objectives, if Jacob somehow flashes all these heroes, and look, it's going to take an extra turn and stuff, but if it happens, I would lose the game. But... If Jacob can't table me and I can keep these acolytes running around the corner and they luckily stay, Jacob has to tag objectives and win the true way. And here's the main event of the turn. It's Thrall, the King of the Dwarves, fighting against the Emperor of the Dragons. Now, a lot of thought went into this one, but Thrain decided not to use his last point of might to strike. So, let's see how he goes without the strike. Alrighty. Ooh, now, he's on a start. six. Uh, this is Rutabi. Ooh. No six there. This is uh, the captain. There's Love a it. six. All right. She's so it's, too good. it's equal in there. That puts us to a 50 50. Now, I've been winning roll offs all game, so surely I can keep that up. Four, five, six. <laughs> yeah, no. Good. Here's a pile of dice. Seeing if he Tasty. can kill Thrain. One for sixes, please. Ooh. Oh, there's not very many. There's, there's a six, one. but Rutabi gets to pick hers up and roll them again. That is. All right. So, what do we need? Like five? Five, five sixes, sixes, please. Oh, no. Wow. Uh, that counts, right? <laughs> I'll take the wound. wound. And with wound. Thrain's fantastic survival, we'll go to Thorin next, fighting against three acolytes. Let's go. This one's four, you can beat that. Ooh. No, you can't. You need a banner. Big cheeky banner. Um, Please. Does he have don't mine? Do it. He doesn't. He's so. out. Show so me five or six. Five or six. Hey! This is a five. I've got my banner as well, though. So one in three, this goes to me. And it dies. Oh. And there was the wound roll, I should have recorded. Three sixes from Thorin. Take them Beast out, Jordy. Take oh, no. them <laughs> out. And finally, it's Thor versus the Dragon Emperor, where both fight six. Okay. I've set the bar on a six. That's very solid. Get that dice out of there. Alright. Lord got... of the East and a banner. And a banner. You need a six. Hey He does it! You get it, but it's not over yet, because it's now a roll-off, but you've got an elven blade. So yeah. on a Five and six, this goes to Thrall. Everything else goes to you. Let's go in. Boom. Goes to you. So I'm defense nine, so you need sixes by fours on the Emperor and sixes by fives on the Palaquin. Easy peasy. And you'll fail your Arkenstone, and that's one dead. We'll see. So one there's so a far. six, needs to be a six by four. Could mind that, but obviously not a chance in heck. Uh, four. All right, Three. so we'll there's a it. wound on Thrall. I'll use the Arkenstone. It's pretty good. It's oh, so okay. I'll so take it, I'll take it. A three will remove the Arkenstone. I've still passed. And now we roll to see if the game ends on a one or two. It continues. All right. Priority went to the Easterlings, but I called a heroic move with Thrain. Geordie Master battled with Rutabi, but the roll-off went to the Dwarves. Now my logic last turn, I think, stands up. I'm just going to take on the heroes. So Thrain is going to charge Rutabi. And he'll charge her like that. And then Thorin is going to charge the Captain. And finally... 
Thraw is going to charge into the Emperor. And in Geordi's movement, one of his acolytes failed the courage test, fleeing the board. It's more progress to tabling him, and that's what matters. <laughs> with Geordi's move, he sent these acolytes into Thraw so that he can trap Thraw with the Emperor. That's scary. I need to rely on my defense nine. And the rest of the acolytes just charged in, with one of them running away to be an insurance policy against tabling. And that is the end of the movement phase. Geordi, do you have any heroics to declare? No, I'm saving that might, baby. I'm going to send it. I'm going to strike with Thraw. Whoa! I'll master battle with Rutabi. Yep. Pass. All right. So Thraw and Rutabi are striking. Let's start with Rutabi fighting against Thrain. Um, given that she's my stand fast, or one of them at least, and my master battle, I'm actually chucking a shield. Oh, the strike shield tactic. All right. And that will go to you because you've got several sixes in there. <laughs> I mean, we didn't check my strike up, but it's more than you. I will just push back. Next fight here is Thorin going up against the captain and two acolytes. Easy win for a captain. Five. Not an easy win. I've got the six. You got the six as well. <laughs> Does not matter for the acolytes. So one, one dead, two, two acolytes yeah, dead. Very good. Thorin has done work this game. Now in this fight with Thor. I've got a decision to make. Thraw can shield here, which would guarantee that he survives, basically. Not guarantee, but it will give him good odds. But if he does shield, he's not going to do any strikes. So I need to decide if I risk it and go for the strikes and try to kill those acolytes and break down your numbers so you can no longer trap me, or if I play it safe. And I've decided that no brave warrior ever shields, so we're going to send it. We're going to try to kill those acolytes. Jordy, do you want to set the bar for me? Easy. Hiya! It's a six. six. Alright, so I've got three dice, but then I've got a banner reroll as well. There oh. we go! It was the right choice. And striking at the acolytes. Oh, Either of them it. die, I'll take my third attack. Oh. Big whiff! Absolutely no damage dealt from Thrall there. And does the game end, Jordy? On the roll of a one or two, it's all over. Look, I was cocky at the start, but it's getting tight. If I'm it sweating. continues, I've got Dude. good odds here. One or two? No! I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I'm sweating freaking bullets here. That went from a schooling in what the ninjas are capable of, that faint, counter faint, move back, move forwards. But then, then you got to see Jacob's army, what it does, which is just, it's got stain power out of its butt. Uh, he had that courage. That early game really helped me. I got the board control. And all it was was a matter of getting Jacob locked into a spot and holding those five capture control objectives. Uh, Shawnee, I hope you were watching, mate, because that was an absolute schooling in what Easterling captains with bows on horses can do. Thank you for watching, and remember if you like the terrain, there's a lot more on its way, so keep your eyes open for that project. And if you want to support the channel, check out 4th Age 3D Printing, where they have some awesome army bundles. And if you use the discount code, you can get $40 off. This has been Conquest Creations. Thank you for watching.